The Micro 800 PLC supports Modbus TCP, but it also supports Modbus RTU. Let's use it to control this PowerFlex 525. Any of the Micro 800 PLCs that have the round serial port connector will support a Modbus RTU. Also on the top of the Micro 820, these small terminals are serial communication. And we're connecting to this PowerFlex 525. And before anybody says it, yes, it does have Ethernet. And we have videos on how you can communicate from the Micro 800 to the PowerFlex 525 over Ethernet. Well, the first obstacle you have to overcome is figuring out the pinout of this cable. That seems to be the most difficult part with any serial communication. But off the DSI port, it's going to be pins 4 and 5. And pin 4 is going to be the blue wire out of a standard Ethernet cable. And it will go to the D+. And the blue and white wire, which is pin 5, will go to the D-. minus. Now let's create a new program and connect to Components Workbench. And I'm going to be using a Micro 820. And it's the one that ends in QBB. And just so I can show the parameters that we're going to change in the PowerFlex 525, I'm going to go ahead and add it to here also. And I'm going to upload the parameters out of the drive. And I'm just going to show the non-default one so you can see what I did. Because the main parameters you're going to need to change are P46 and P47, which is typically what you need to change on a PowerFlex 525. Now, these parameter numbers are different on some of the other PowerFlexes. And if you're using a different drive, then obviously they'll be different for it, which I didn't actually mention. That's what's so cool about Modbus, especially Modbus RTU, is it's a very universal protocol. So if you know your baud rate and those basic communication things, and you know where you need to read and write from, you can control almost any device, no matter what manufacturer it is. So you're going to change P46 to 3 and P47 to three. That's gonna make it where our start source and our speed reference are gonna come over that serial port. And in my case, I needed the baud rate to be 19.2, and my node address was two. Now you also see I have some ethernet IP parameters here. Don't worry about those. That's just so I can communicate with the drive in other videos. Now let's configure our serial port, which to get there, we're going to double click on the Micro 820 and then we're going to select serial port. And it's going to default to a CIP serial driver. And when you try to hit the drop down, it's not going to let you change it. And it says down here, remote LCD is configured to override serial port parameters. So we're going to click on this because this is a link. And then we're going to uncheck the configure serial port for remote LCD. Now we can go back to the serial port and now we have our drop down and can select my bus RTU. And we're going to leave all this at the defaults. And now we're going to go ahead and create a program. So right click programs, add new ladder diagram and we'll open it up. And let's start by bringing down an instruction block and type Modbus. And you're going to see two options come up. We have the TCP and the RTU. So the RTU is the serial one that we're using. And let's go ahead and just start creating tags for all this. Now we're going to do a read and a write. So I'm just going to start filling these in. So this is our cancel. So I'm going to double click and type read cancel. And it's going to go through really quickly and do all of those. And then I'm actually going to double click on this function block again. And at the bottom, you can name these. And instead of leaving it the default instance, I'm just going to call this read Modbus. And now I'm going to copy this line. And we're going to paste it. And now I'm going to change all these to writes. And then I'm going to double click on this function block and we're going to change it to write Modbus. And then I'm going to highlight one of them and just hit F1 to bring up the help just so we can go through a couple of things. And mainly this is going to give us all of our error codes. But if we go on down, we have our target parameters and local parameters. And if I go to my local parameters, then we got some important information here. So first is the channel. 
And so two is the embedded serial port. So on both of them, our channel is going to be two. And then we have our message trigger type. Now we can have it trigger continuously or once each time it goes true. Now I'm going to use the once just so we can show how we can make a sample rate. And then we're going to need to know these commands. So I'm going to bounce back to it in just a second. And then the element count. So now I'm going to open up our local variables. And let's open up read local param and write local param. Because they're both going to be roughly the same. And on my project value, we're going to put two for the channel on both of them. Because that is the built-in Ethernet port. And our trigger type is going to be zero. Because I'm going to make an external sample rate. And then we have this command here. So we're going to read with this one. So if we go back, our read is going to be a three because we're going to read some holding registers to get some information about it. And then our write, we're going to write to multiple registers. So that's going to be a 16. So this is going to be a three. And this one down here, our right is going to be a 16. Then our element count, just so we'll see some information, I'm going to put 10 in here on the read, just so you can see that you're going to read multiple things. On our right, I'm going to put a size of 2, because I'm going to write a run command and a speed command to this. Now let's go back to our ladder logic, and I'm going to insert a rung above these, and I'm going to bring down an instruction block. And I'm going to find a T-O-N. And I'm going to call this my sample rate. And I'm going to put an examine off in front of it. And we're going to look at sample rate dot Q, which is the done bit in Studio 5000. And I'm going to make this sample rate one second. And one really neat thing, if you don't know in Connected Components, I could put T number 1S. And 1S means one second. And now I'm going to put an examine on in front of both of these, looking at that sample rate dot Q. Copy. And down here, we're going to paste it. So the next thing we need to look at is our target parameter. So let's go back to our local variables and let's open up both of those target parameters. Oops, and I just realized earlier I made a mistake. Apparently I renamed this tag by accident. So I'm just going to double click on this one and that'll be read. Okay, yeah, because we need a separate target parameter for the read and the write. And now we have write target parameter. And we have read target parameter. And there's mainly two things we're going to need in here. We're going to need an address and a node. And it's a little confusing because you would think this address is the address we configured in the PowerFlux drive, but it's not. It's the node. And the easy way to remember it is the smaller number is going to be what we'll call the address. The larger number is where do we want to read and write data from? So I hope my address of my PowerFlex 525 is 2. So I'm going to put that in my node parameter for both of these. My read parameter address is going to be 1 because that's going to give us some data about whether our drive is running and the speed and various things. And then our write is going to be 8193. And there is a Modbus chart that you can look all this up on the PowerFlex 525 drive. Okay, I had to leave and I forgot to save the file. So I just recreated it and I noticed that I made a few tags that were different in the second version. In the first one, for example, I had read target param. Now I have message read target param. So you'll see a few differences, but I think you can follow all that. Now let's add three wrongs just to make this a little easier to operate. And we're going to examine on run. And if run is on, then we are going to put a one in right local address bracket one close bracket dot zero. And then we're going to examine off that same run bit. And I'm just going to copy this address because it is going to be that same address with a one at the end of it. Mainly, I already know this is our start drive and this is our stop drive. And then let's bring a move down. 
And we're going to create a tag called speed. And it's going to be right local address two. And there will be no, no extension on the end of it. And let's go ahead and download that. And if you need any help on any of that or we went too fast through any of it, just look down in the description. We have lessons on everything from creating new programs to the basic instructions to using messaging commands to uploading and downloading. And now if we have done this correctly, if I toggle this run bit, this drive should start. And OK. You probably heard it did make a noise, but it did not start because I forgot to put a speed in it. So now let's just go ahead and go to our local variables and go down to our speed. And I'm going to put 3000 in it. And right above it, there's the checkbox. So as soon as I check that box, and we see it's starting to run. And you probably might be able to see there it's saying roughly 30 hertz now. And if I go and change this to 1500, you'll hear it start to drop down. And yeah, now we're going to run 15 hertz. Also, if we look at our local read parameters now, we get some values in here. And so there's that 1500 we put in. Did you know we also have videos on how to read and write to a Compact Logix PLC? over Ethernet using Modbus, and also we have some PowerFlex 525 videos. Click here to learn more about Modbus.